What happened to Elani? I think walikuwa na manager alikuwa na wadanganya mm-hmm. because waka mm-hmm. kitu kwa danganya they can replace out his soul. Mm-hmm. Big yes of the so mistake. Competition mm-hmm. now. Just relax, enjoy the music, do the music. True. Usiwae jipe unajipima nisha na mamamba. In 2023, Elani made this post, a simple post, a picture of Wambui Ngugi and a caption saying, "Hey there." Many people commented. Some fans were furious asking why is Elani just posting pictures and not songs. Most of the comments were brutal and I'll sample the good comments. If you don't record new music, don't say hey to us. Some asking when they are getting back to the studio and they should release music even if it's bad music. Fans wanted Elani to make a comeback because at the time the industry was dominated by talentless artists. Like should I mention or let me say it. At that time, Diana Bati or Diana B's song called Narudi Soko was the most popular song as it reached the top of the charts on Boomplay and YouTube. Just imagine. So you understand why fans wanted Elani to make a comeback. As compared to artists today, Elani was not writing songs. They wrote real life stories, which were beautiful stories. The group took Kenya by storm with their music. It was sensible and different. It was not the usual genge, kapuka or bumba. The goal was to change the society and so they focused on important and emotive subjects like domestic violence which was evident in the song called Sirudi featuring Jagua. It was a good song and that is not the only song they released. There's Jana Usiku, Milele, Hapo Zamani, Zuzu and without forgetting Kuku. Kuku was a big song. The visuals are perfect. The vocals are also perfect. And 10 years later, the video plus the ladies still look fresh. It was even one of YouTube's most watched videos of 2014. Elani managed to capture our attention with just good vocals and positive subjects. They had zero scandals, no nudes, and their songs still went viral. Sisi ni kio cha jamii. That means our job is to be able to highlight whatever it is that is happening in society. Our job is to provoke everybody to challenge themselves to do better to become better people so as to impact their societies positively. That's our job. If we don't do that then there's no point in having the voices that we do have. Kwani wapili kosea. Almost all Lelani songs were hit songs and people felt that the band would replace Sauti Soul but that never happened the last video published by the trio on their youtube channel is at least 3 years old called Nimejaribu and as fans to Nimejaribu sana to beg Elani to make a comeback but they are still taking a break or did they stop making music what happened to Elani let's find out remember to like this video and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and follow me on instagram at ongori.report but right now i have a band who i'm calling the future they are called elani so they have joined me in studio welcome to the morning express elani the future of kenyan music yes, yes. <laughs> joining us on AM Live to talk about music to talk about not staying down not putting people down and not accepting to stay down Elani hi hi, hi guys how are you good you've been well. here before you should yes, be walking around serving me Elani started from the bottom and became the biggest superstars in Africa they became the new image of the then young Kenyan sound in their prime Elani was untouchable and we'll talk about that later in this video The group is made up of three individuals: Wamboi Ngugi, Morin Kunga, and Brian Chwea. These are not just artists, they are scholars, and they are one of the most educated artists in Kenya. Morin and Brian are advocates of the High Court of Kenya, and Wamboi studied actuarial science. Really have gotten a good education thanks to our parents. Woo-hoo. Hey moms and dads. 
Uh, yeah, so these two, Maureen and Brian, advocates of the High Court of Kenya, people call them lawyers all the time, and there's a, big, there's a yeah, huge difference. difference. Speaking as a, an associated lawyer, there's a huge difference between a lawyer and an advocate. These are advocates, so come on, the respect is due. They, they work hard and I saw them working hard. So these are advocates of the High Court of Kenya. I got, I got a degree in actual science, so yeah, we, 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 we are really grateful because it really did switch our thinking and, and upgraded our level of thinking, so we are really grateful, grateful to our parents. And the name Elani means light in Griyama and in Greek, and they chose that name because they wanted to inspire more people and light the lives of people. They also wanted to change the local music landscape and put Kenya on the international map, and it was not that easy. When they were growing up, musicians were not taken seriously. Maybe that is why they studied hard, but later they got into music and their goal was to change that notion that music can't be a full-time career, as they believed that music pays. Their parents were opposed to that, but it was too late, and with time, they were cool with it. When they were coming up, the Kenyan industry was already saturated with music from several music bands, like Heart the Band, Amos and Josh, and Sauti Soul, which was the more popular group. It was a bit challenging at first, but Elani had a winning formula. Their songs were simple but melodious, with catchy lyrics, slightly different from what other people were doing. <laughs> Elani was started in 2008. At the time, they were doing performances, which were normal performances and a cappellas. They even tried auditioning at the Allianz Francaise for a program where a number of artists were selected to record an album but they did not succeed. At first, there were five vocalists, but with time, other members left the group so as to study and pursue other things. Brian Choya never left because he believed the group had potential, and he summoned Maureen and Wambui, and after an agreement, they created Elani. We just gravitated towards each other and we started to hang out at Allianz a lot more, and then days became months, months became more months. And then one uh, other people left the group. People want to study in Korea. Others left to do their own thing. Uh, they wanted to be solo artists. So Maureen, and, Maureen, Brian, and myself were left behind. And one day, Brian just asked us, okay, girls, ikitu, mko serious ama mnonaji? Me and Maureen are like, Sour. I mean, just <laughs> as a young, naive child, just saying sour, let's do it. Yeah. Not knowing what that sour, let's do it will mean for us 12 years to come because this is our, it's not even our 12th year, that's what, 2018, like 19, 20, 21. 13 like years. 13, 14. 13, about. yeah. It's yeah. going to be about 14 years. In 2011, they decided to pursue music professionally and they even got signed to a record label, but they were later dropped and they had to figure things out on their own. The hardest thing that we went through was probably in August last year, which was just before we came here, actually. And uh, we, we were sat down uh, by our label, and we were dropped. And we were told, you know like what? Like a hot potato. Yeah, no. and we were told, uh, you're, you're not, we don't see you guys making it. It's not making financial sense for us to be involved with you anymore. And, and that's that. Okay, go away. <laughs> Out the door. Yeah. So um, the... the the thing that hit us mostly at that point was the fact that first we'd gone to that meeting to discuss a video. Like we yeah. didn't, we had completely blindsided. That's number one. And then also number two, it was just that we, were, we had just got to the point where we were about to release a song and we were just about to reach what we thought was our potential. What many people don't know is that Elani's success came after years of crafting and perfecting their music. It was not easy because their sound was different. According to Elani, their sound is urban afro because it comes from different musical inspirations and most importantly it is african elani opened a whole new chapter in kenyan music when they released their debut single jana usiku that was 10 years ago in september 2013. in the beginning it was hard for them to get airplay so they decided to sell their music in clubs and that strategy did not work in 2013, they focused on the online space, Facebook and Twitter, and they were tagging famous radio personalities like Caroline Mutoko, 
hoping that the presenters will notice their music and play it. The strategy worked. Jano Siku went viral and the radios were now playing their music. So we went ahead and just kept posting. Actually, our strategy was we went online on Twitter, on Facebook, mm. and we tagged uh, every influential person. Caroline Motoko was mm. on radio those days and everybody else that we knew to call tag one by one <laughs> by one and to call a link. And slowly, my fans wow, wakanza kuona hii link. Mm. So people started clicking on it. Slowly and surely, by the time we landed in January, yeah. Jano Siku had 30,000 views. 30,000 views was almost the equivalent of having maybe 1.5 million mm. views right now. True. That was it's a true. really big deal because the, the great songs were even the ones from Uko, Inje Inje. Mm. Look what Uko, my 20 <laughs> million. Elani's distinct and acoustic sound won the hearts of many, not just in Kenya, but also in other countries in Africa. In case you had no idea, the song was produced by Delvin Mudigi or Savara from Sauti Soul. I was part of the making of that song. I was I was the producer of that song and it was really awesome working with Alani, you know. Genosiku paved the way for their subsequent singles that included Zuzu, Milele, Hapo Zamani, Kuku and many other songs that are in their debut album Barua e Dunia. Now, after they dropped this album, Barua e Dunia, Elani enjoyed limitless airplay thanks to songs like Jana Usiku, Kuku, Milele, and Barua e Dunia. Barua e Dunia, the song, is an emotional song and at the same time has a deep message on life challenges. According to Elani, real life challenges were an integral aspect in creating their catchy lyrics and they also focused on making clean music so that you your mother, your father, the entire family can enjoy their music. It's called full family entertainment. Their music even got accepted at the pulpit. On December 21st, 2014, the band performed at Mavuno Church in a special Christmas carol service. This raised eyebrows, of course, from Christians, because Elani was not a gospel group. They issued a statement saying that they might not be gospel artists but that does not mean they are not believers. After all, their songs are about experiences that everyone goes through, which is true. Now, some of the songs Elani was releasing were written many years ago, and they had no idea that the songs would later become hits and make Elani a household name. Even though the songwriting was a collaborative effort, Brian Chwaya did the most work. He was like the main songwriter. Songs. Brian is a main songwriter. Okay. There, there, there are songs where Maureen and I have chipped in. But to be honest, when someone is the one who's bringing the concept, has visualized the concept, is selling the vision, mm. and then now you're adding, uh, you're, you're, he's really the visionary. Yeah, and he's yeah, really sure. the special guy when it comes to matter songwriting. And hands down, I, I know very few people in my hand mm. in this country that can write the way Brian does. <laughs> At first, times were hard. The first gig they ever did was at a funeral, and they then performed at a birthday party. But after there, they performed on big stages, dominating airwaves and award shows. In 2014, Elani's song Kuku was nominated as the most gifted video in East Africa in the Channel O Awards. Saudi Soul was also in the same category with the Anishike video. In the same year, Elani managed to bag the Best African Pop Award in the 2014 All African Music Awards or AFRIMA. Elani emerged top after battling it out against South Africa's Mafiki Zolo and Peace Square of Nigeria. From here, fans were positive that Elani was heading to the Grammys, but instead, Elani went into hiatus. But unbeknownst to many, a lot was happening behind the scenes. The group once admitted that they were very broke and the lack of money caused them to employ several strategies so as to get some cash. In 2016, Elani announced that they started out the year 2015 in serious debt. After they spent a lot of money to put together their October 2014 Share the Love concert at the Impala grounds outside Nairobi, the financial setback forced the trio to stop focusing on making and releasing music in order to find more lucrative ways to pay their debt. 
Elaine also claimed that the structures within the music industry in Kenya made a lot of musicians to fail, as those entrusted to distribute the money, which is generated by artist hard work, failed to do so. And this is where the problem came up, because we realized the check that they gave us, which was a check for 31,000 shillings, which was supposed to be the value of Elani music playing everywhere for the period of a year, didn't make a lot of sense to us. And we questioned the amount, I think, only because we happened to be in debt. If we weren't in debt at the time, I'm not sure that this would have come up. But we realized that there's something wrong. This didn't feel right. It didn't feel like the amount of money that I'm supposed to receive, especially seeing as 2014 was such a good year yeah. for a land. In 2014, MCSK, or the Musical Copyright Society of Kenya, paid them 31,000 Kenyan shillings in royalties, which did not make sense. But the fact that 2014 was a widely successful year for Elani, with the release of hits like Nakupenda, Milele, and Kuku. So they made a choice to visit and have a talk with the MCSK, so as to get answers why they only received 31,000 Kenyan shillings. Three days later after the talk, the band received a phone call from MCSK and they awarded a compensatory sum of 300,000 Kenya shillings, hoping that will settle the dispute. That made the group realize that something really wrong had been going on. Elani suspected that they were not alone in being awarded low royalty checks and they demanded that the MCSK should open up its books Please to the public. Intervene, because enough is enough. We are tired, we feed off music, we live off music, and it is the only way forward to, for us. Away from that, in an interview on the Mike Check podcast, Savara made some claims that might have led to the downfall of Elani. Remember Savara was at one time their producer. Savara claimed that Elani faced difficulties because Brian Choya was frequently left out and the women felt like the stars. According to Savara, their manager was misleading them and they were trying to compete with Saudi Soul. Savara also claimed that Elani members had a plan B or second careers to fall back to. Bran and Maureen are advocates and Wambui studied actuarial science. And so they were never really motivated to fight for the main thing, which was music. <laughs> To make ends meet. Yeah. 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 And now, when that happens, yeah. down the drain. So, as a group, dynamic in a fact, we're like, come to my money, Mziki, Mziki. Yeah. We can't have a two to sing in, eh? Come, Mula. I'm not saying that I'm, I'm yeah. judging. Yeah, see, go by. I'm saying that I'm not judging. No, no, it's fine. No, no. To each their own. Yeah. Whether Savara is right or wrong, we can't really tell. But he once worked with the group. And what's the point of making such claims to Cloud Chase? Maybe, maybe not. In response, Branch Ware called out Savara for criticizing Elani. He refuted Savara's statements and cautioned him against chasing Cloud through Elani's name. Brian even said that Savara is just angry because BN is doing much better than he expected alone. Hey, that's brutal. There were claims that Elani was disbanded, but they never really broke up. According to Elani, the long break was intentional for their career growth as they were trying to figure out new ideas and explore new things, including other music genres. They disclosed in an interview that the bond they have built over the years can't be easily broken, and fans should understand that taking long breaks was not a new thing to them. The break also gave them an opportunity to explore other things they can do beyond music. Another reason they went missing is that at some point they felt lost. Even though the first year was great, everyone was celebrating Elani and they made money, there was a lot of pressure and that's why they took a break. After the long break, Elani made a comeback in 2018 and they released a song called Mahindi, which was a bit different from their usual songs as it was very political. It received mixed reactions some saying the song is good, while others wondering why they decided to make a song about Mahindi. Now, according to Elani, Mahindi is a song that addresses food security, and it's meant to open up the minds and hearts of all Kenyans to speak out against the chronic food security problem 
that is crippling our nation. In 2019, Elani released their second album, Colors of Love. Finally. finally! So Colors of Love is finally out. We are so excited, we're so proud. It's such a passion, passion project. You know, a proper passion project. It is full of like raw emotional songs. Um, it's a story being told. It's available everywhere. So you can just buy yours right now. The album has songs like Heartbeat, Kambali, Maua, Joto, and the list is long. Their last song collaboration as Elani was in 2020, when they released the video of this song called Nimejaribu. Now this was a good comeback, unlike their previous attempt to make a comeback with the song Mahindi, as some fans, you know, felt that the song was a flop. After the release of Nimejaribu, Elani did not try making more songs, but that was not the end of Elani. In 2022, Branch Chua released his first solo project with an artist called Masi Walker. Bran also had a new name, Chuizi. The song he released is called Mashup Fan Buzz, and it pays homage to songs by different artists who have shaped the music industry over the years. According to Chuizi, that was the new direction that the band was taking, creating opportunities for young and upcoming artists. As Bran Chua or Chuizi was busy supporting young artists, Maureen and Wamboi were also busy creating content as they both had YouTube channels. Wamboi makes content about hair health and Maureen produces lifestyle content. Elani's impact on the music scene will always be remembered. It might seem like they are fading from the limelight, but Brian Choya or Chuizi believes that the group is not dead and fans should expect an Elani collaboration in the foreseeable future. Subira jaribu kuivuta le, oh subira jaribu kuivuta le.